to you, but I just got a package in the mail. I got some uh, cow track traction bars. They're supposed to, I've read they can like double your traction, so we'll see how good they are. I'm gonna take you out here. It's really windy, you're gonna get some wind noise. I apologize in advance, but uh, I'll go ahead and get these things installed. I got them uh, opened up here. Here's uh, everything that comes with it. These go on the bottom of uh, your leaf or your axle. You swap them out for your stock ones, and uh, you got you got to get out your stock rubber bushing on the front of your leaf and put these in. That'll probably be the biggest pain in the butt. And then these go up on the front of the leaf spring too. And those are the bars there. So I'm gonna start with this. I'll show you all uh, what needs to be done. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, your uh, your stock nuts can be kind of hard to get off depending on how rusty your truck is or how old it is. So hopefully mine aren't too bad. I might have to get a torch out. We'll find out. But it's just, uh, it's kind of obvious, but maybe if you haven't been underneath here, it might not be. So, there's your stock one. So you just gotta take that off and uh, put this one up in its place. All right guys, so I tried to put the uh, this piece here on the bottom of my uh, axle. I was actually pleasantly surprised. My nuts came off super easy. However, uh, they sent me the wrong part. This is for a Dana 70. I got a Dana 80. You can see here the uh, bolt holes are spaced apart quite a bit different. This is about an inch wider bolt pattern. So I called them up. Uh, I was real happy with their uh, their customer service. They uh, they ever knighted me uh, the right pair. I got it probably almost 12 hours after I called them. And they're from California and I'm in Kentucky. So that's pretty good customer service in my book. So uh, right now I'm working on uh, taking these bolts out of your front leaf here. This one here, uh, I took the impact on the nut. It come right off. Uh, bolt slid right out, no problem. What I didn't think about is the driver's side here. Um, I don't know why they would put the bolt in this way. You would think you had a nut on that side. But you gotta drop the tank to get your factory bolt out. My truck's kind of rusty. It's got a lot of fuel in it. I wouldn't be real surprised if the bolts for the straps broke or stripped out or something. It was kind of a can of worms I didn't really feel like getting into. So I took my uh, cutoff wheel here. I was able to get it in, like at this angle right here. I cut a little bit and I spin the bolt and cut some more. It took me just a couple minutes and I cut the head off the bolt basically. So now I can just pull this right out. I'm gonna have to get a new bolt. I'm gonna put it in this way and then I'm gonna take a nut. I weld some kind of little piece of metal to it, hanging out from it that way. It catches something and I don't have to try to get a wrench in there. All right guys, so I'm trying to do as many shortcuts as I can here. Uh, I think you're supposed to, the instructions say pull the whole leaf off and take it to your press. I'm trying to do this on the truck, it'd be a lot easier. So all I did was uh, I took the bolt out and uh, I hung the axle by its own weight. Um, I had to go, I wanted just a little bit further so I could clear uh, my fender here. So I shoved a little block of wood in there and then uh, I used my, uh, my ball joint press here and uh, I use this little sleeve here that fits on there pretty good and then I did this like that and then uh, this goes up around it like this you know you get the idea so I got it out as far as uh this little spacer is uh, the more it came out the easier the easier it was so I'm gonna try to tap it out the rest of the way uh, I'm gonna try my air hammer first so 
I tried to take a picture with y'all sitting on a leaf, but it was vibrating too much. But yeah, the air hammer knocked it right out. It was most of the way out of it anyway. So, uh, that was going to be the biggest pain in the butt, but now I got a fishing up back there. So, but overall, man, this is, uh, this is going a lot easier than I thought it would. I thought I would have had to get some torches out and some other stuff, but, uh, it's coming apart pretty easy. So, uh, I'm going to go do the other side now. All right, I'll try to get you guys set up so you can uh, watch the show here. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this out and you all can uh, watch the process here. So I need this to go a little lower so my tool can come underneath this piece here. So I think it's bottomed out in the sleeve now. This sleeve that I'm pressing into isn't as long as the bushing. So uh, it started going real easy there at the end and then it kind of stopped. So go ahead and back this off and take this off here. Take that back off and I just gotta knock out the rest of it. Ain't really working. I might have to cut this off, and then I'll have I can press it out the rest of the way really easy. Be nice if it would just come, though. But it don't seem like it wants to. So it took a minute. I hacked it off with my cutoff wheel. Um, I couldn't film it because the sparks will hit the lens and it'll mess it up. So I mean, it's not that hard to cut it off with the cut off wheel so now it should be real easy to press off the remaining because it was coming pretty easy before it bottomed out so we'll get this set up here So, the reason we're taking this out is there's an aluminum one that goes in its place. And there's a part of the uh, kit goes on here. Yeah. Not quite. I keep doing this little thing. Back and forth thing a couple more times. Put the little on the bottom, a little on top. Then I can finally get it and put it on the center of it. shape of this thing it kind of sits inside this hole a little bit I need to go get like a little plate of steel or something to keep it so I can make it all the way in see this little scrap piece of quarter inch steel I got laying right here I think 
Yeah, we'll do your fellas. Boy, that's a pretty tight fit. You definitely gotta have at the very minimum a ball joint press if you're not gonna take the whole thing out and put it in a real press. So this contraption slides over top of this thing somehow. There it is. Just like that. All right, so now that's slid over there. Go ahead and slide that in. There it is. All right. So there's that side. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let it hang low until I get the other side done, and then all I gotta do is throw it up there and throw a bolt through it. And that's all for uh, this piece. We gotta do that piece still, and then just the bar. But this is definitely the hardest thing. So uh, I'm gonna go get some new bolts. And uh, I'll be back. All right, guys. So instead of dropping the tank to slide this long bolt out, you just cut off the stock one. Go get you a new one. I just grabbed a, uh, a 5 8 bolt. I think the factory one, 16 millimeter. They're they're almost the same size. So uh, I made this here. I just took a uh, a nut and welded this little piece of metal on here. Um, if you don't have a welder, you could probably like. So you what you want to do is slide it in through the top of this thing like that you drop it down in there and then so now I can just pick this up like that if you don't have a welder you could probably take a magnet to the top of the nut and just hold it like that and then once you get a few threads started you can probably just slide a wrench in from the top so uh, this is definitely way easier than uh, dropping your tank. So I'm definitely gonna do it like that. And I recommend you do that too. It saves you a lot of time. You don't gotta mess with no rusty straps or nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this other bushing on this side and then uh, bolt it up and then we'll continue on with the rest of the kit. All right guys, I got both sides put together just like this. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check this rear end back up and. Uh, Put my bolts through. All right, guys, so I got my other side on here. Uh, it's time to jack up this rear end and get the bolt in. I'm having a hard time. Uh, the leaf's too far back. I'm working alone and I can't, I can't hold it forward and get the bolt in. So I, uh, I attached a ratchet strap. I'm gonna pull this forward a half inch so I can get my bolt hole lined up here. Like it's far enough forward, I just gotta go up just a little bit. Let's try that. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. There she goes. Yeah. Don't 
think it's out the other side yet. There it is. Now let's see if I can start this nut. It's kind of doing it by feel here. That's the ass tight. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and throw my wheels back on. And then we'll get these uh, these pads back on the axle done. Alright, so this part should be pretty easy. You just got to swap out this stock pad for this new one here. You want to loosen up one side at a time. If you loosen up both sides, your axle could actually like come out and uh, your truck could land on you or something. But if you do one side at a time, it's safe. So you just gotta take these four bolts out. And then just swap the plate out. Works a lot better when they give you the right plate. The first plate, I got a, this is a Dana 80 truck, so it's axle tubes like an inch bigger diameter than a Dana 70. The first time they gave me a Dana 70 plate, but they fixed it. They, uh, they overnighted it, so I can't really complain. This only takes, I think, a Probably gonna be less than a minute to swap this thing out, so that's pretty easy. You wanna make sure you uh, tighten these up kind of even. enough to me go ahead and knock out the other side real quick and then I'll go ahead and uh, put the bars on okay guys so I threaded my uh, my bar onto this hind joint they already have this assembled out of the box looks like it's tight too so I threaded that on I got my hind joint my rod in whatever you want to call it on the other end Let's put this through and then there we go Seems like that's pretty good. Just trying to get make sure it fits before I start messing with all these spacers and everything. Set that. And then spacer. And then this. And then another spacer. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything up besides uh, this adjustment on the bar. My driveway is a bit of a hill. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move it to level ground before I uh, snug down these nuts and everything. So you're supposed to uh, get all the slack out, which basically it is right now. And then you do like an extra, I read the instructions once last night, it's like an extra turn or something. I'll, I'll go read it and let you know for sure. But I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up and uh, get the other side done. And then I'll do my preload. And then I'll take her out for a spin and see how she does. Alright guys, so I got these all buttoned up. I took them out of level ground and uh, 
you take all the play out of it and then it's an extra uh, uh, half turn you put on so I really like these things uh, what I like best about them is number one everybody I know that's got a pair says they're awesome as far as traction improvements and wheel hop uh, what I also like about them is they're short uh, I've seen some that are like go like way closer to the front of the truck and uh you know, people paint them like bright green and stuff i don't i don't like all that crap i just like it pretty plain so uh yeah they look pretty good i'm gonna go uh i actually gotta install some gauges still and then uh i'll take this thing out and uh see how she runs so i uh, hope you enjoyed this video hopefully this can help you if you put a set of traction bars on your truck and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.